Hey everybody, this is Apostle Misha Softier welcoming you to this Tuesday night's edition of Study in the Word. And tonight we're going to have a, a good study. It's titled Heaven Bound, Not Without Holiness, okay? So I want to give everyone a chance to uh, sign on this evening and uh, make a couple of announcements. Uh, I want to remind all of you uh, that uh, <clears throat> I have a um, <clears throat> that have your have your friend lists and everything everybody on Facebook does to be sure and hit your share button if this message blesses you and it helps you because there are others that I'll never minister to as I'm sure you've heard me say before <clears throat> that are on your list that you know but they may need help and so if this word has helped you. Please, please be sure and get the word over to them so that um, they can benefit from it also, okay? Second of all, <clears throat> um, you've got a like button. If you enjoy the message, hit the like button, okay? Because what that does on my uh, Facebook page is people look me up and then when they see some of my posts and articles and various things like that, and they see the likes, it draws their attention to it and makes them curious, makes them want to get in and hear the word. And that's what we want. We want everyone and as many people as we can to hear this word. And that's why I do this. That's why we do what we're doing here uh, tonight. Okay, so tonight is going to be a really important uh, study. And it will be a study because we'll have several scriptures to go through. <clears throat> and um, we're going to really talk about this because holiness is um, something that's really, really important and many, many times it's overlooked. Uh, people go to church, <clears throat> they understand salvation, they understand grace. Um, we're, we're sanctified and sanctification is a form of holiness and yet we're all, we're continually being sanctified and made holy but it's uh, something that we should pursue in our lifestyle. And the Word of God tells us that. So we're going to talk about that a little bit because in many of our churches today and, and uh, many Christians in general, they think about the rapture. <clears throat> they think about the end time. They think about salvation, which is all fine. They think about health and wealth and prosperity <clears throat> things like that, and they think about ministry and all kinds of other things, even uh, witnessing and sharing the gospel to others. All of these things have their place in the Word of God, but sometimes what's neglected is holiness, the idea and, and the concept that we have to remember that God is requiring of us that we live a holy life, and I remember once a minister uh, said in one of his sermons a long time ago when I was just starting out ministry myself that a Christian is what you are when no one is looking. And so, folks, holiness is something that we walk in when no one is looking, okay? It's something that it, it becomes a part of our life and so it's something that we need to seek and we need to pursue God after. Lord, help me to be holy, I want to be pleasing to you because you don't know who's watching you and you don't know when they're watching you. I always say when I preach in services that every Christian, whether you know it or not, has a magnifying glass over their life. Somebody is watching. Somebody is watching what's going on in your life and they want to see whether you're real. They want to see whether this Christian walk really does work for you so that they can apply it and they can try it and they can walk with the Lord themselves because there are so many outside of the church today that really want to believe, but they need to see Christ exemplified in us, okay? And so this is why holiness is so important, but we're going to really get to the root of it and talk a little bit about this in, in our study. So we're going to have probably four or five scriptures. It won't be too long, but it'll be a blessing for you. So let's pray. If you're on 
send up a flag or a flare or something. Let me know that you're here. <clears throat> I know that there'll be those that will come on a few now, and there'll be those that came will come on later because I always put my reminders up for Tuesday night to let people know that we're going to be on. And a lot of times I get it in the middle of done in the middle of the day, but today I didn't put it up till about twenty minutes before going on with you tonight. So uh, there may be some that are just getting it now, and others that will see it later and will sign on and watch this. Okay, so we'll be praying and believing God to reach everyone's heart with this message and this study this evening. Father, I thank you so much, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to bring this study and this word. Lord, I know that there will be those from Pakistan and from other countries, from the Philippines and from places all around the world, as well as here in uh, perhaps Arizona and in California and other places in the United States watching this. And I pray, Lord, that you'll touch their heart with this, Lord, that it's going to be something that they see the necessity of, Lord, as you've impressed it on me also. And I thank you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. So if you have your Bible with you, uh, turn with me first to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, okay? And I'll wait and give you a minute to get there, and then we'll proceed. Hebrews chapter 12, and we're going to read verse, let me see, which one? Verse 14. So Hebrews twelve fourteen. I really want to emphasize the importance of this message to you, okay? So while you're looking at your Bible, let me clean my glasses, make sure they're nice and clear so that I can read easily because these things do have a tendency to get a little bit dirty or fog up sometimes. So here we go, okay? Beginning in verse 14, follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now I'm going to read that again, okay? Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Now I'm not going to get into this once saved, always saved issues and things like that. Do I, do I believe in eternal security? Yes, I, I don't believe anyone can take your salvation away from you. But I believe you can walk away from it, just like you came to the altar of uh, uh, of decision and made the acceptance of Jesus Christ as Lord of your own life, you have a will, and you can certainly turn around and walk away and say, "You know what? I don't want it anymore. I changed my mind," and you can walk away. And there are some that have done that, some in, biblically. Paul talked about Demas, I believe it was, who was with us, but then he walked away because he loved the world. Those those were what he said, and then. Uh, he goes on to talk that there are those that once walked with us now that are enemies of the cross of Christ. Well, you can't be an enemy of the cross of Christ and have walked with them unless you've turned away and made a decision to go in the opposite direction. Well, folks, <clears throat> holiness ties into that because the Word of God, I, you can't, I can't erase this and act like it's not there. For those that think, well, all i got to do is ask the Lord into my heart as Savior and I can live however I want to live and I'm going to go to heaven because in the end, uh, somehow I'm going to make it. And I don't know, it's a very, very dangerous, slippery doctrine. And I think it's a damnable doctrine to send a lot of people to hell. And so I will be very, very careful with it. Because here the Bible tells you to follow peace with all men and holiness without, with, without which no man shall see the Lord. Now, that's not me speaking, okay? That is the writer of Hebrews, and he's, he's telling us, again, to seek peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So if you want to see the Lord, got to be holy. You can say, well, I'm holy in Christ because when I ask Jesus into my life, I put on his holiness. If that's true, though, folks, then you have to also live that because what you put on, you have to you live out in your life. If you proclaim yourself to be sanctified and holy in Christ, then it needs to be manifested through you. The Bible says that you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. So see, it's not enough to be a tree and it's not enough to be a fruit-bearing tree if the tree 
isn't actually bearing the fruit. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like the fig tree, for instance, that was supposed to bear figs, but it didn't, so Christ cursed the fig tree. Okay? Well, in the same way, we're, we are um, fruit-bearing trees, but we need to bear the fruit. And one of the fruits of a relationship with Jesus Christ and walking with God is the fruit of holiness. It is uh, not listed, I don't think, as one of the fruits of the Spirit, but it certainly is a outcrop or an outcome. Uh, it is a, uh, a fruit of, uh, or an, an evidence of your relationship with Jesus Christ, that you would be holy as he is holy. Okay, and so I want to make sure that you take this scripture, if you have your Bibles with you, and you've got them in written form and you're not looking at them on your, on your cell phone, um, this is a good opportunity to take this scripture and to underline it and remind you and remind yourself in the middle of the day and the times that you're not in church and times that you're not watching an online Bible study like what we're having this evening, but during the course of the middle of the day when you're driving somewhere, maybe when you're going into a store and you're standing in line and you're aggravated because the cashier seems to be taking too long or a customer has got, you know, too, you know, taking forever that's in front of you and, or somebody's driving crazy and cutting you off and doing stupid stuff on the <clears throat> freeway or on the highway or on the street somewhere. And the times that you're most inclined to want to say something or to, to get agitated and irritated, you have to remember, wait a minute, God is requiring that I be holy. I, I need to live a holy life. The world, rest of the world, they may take this particular view. They may take this particular option. This might be what they would do, but it's not what I'm going to do because God is requiring that I walk in holiness, that I be holy. Being holy is not just what you evidence and present in front of others, but folks, like I said, being a Christian is who you are when no one else is looking, but God is watching and he sees everything. And so holiness is much the same way. In order to walk holy, we need to forsake the sins of our past, whatever they may be, from the moment that you came on line to watch this broadcast this evening to maybe 10, 20 years ago and all the way through up and now. There are, 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 are sins, hidden sins of the heart, uh, things that perhaps that you're holding within you that you've never totally gotten rid of. And, and look, the Lord is saying, I want you to take these things and put them behind you and walk in a righteous manner, walk in a holy manner, because without holiness, no man shall see God. You need to walk in this. And, and so, folks, I can't even, I can't overstate the importance that as Christians, it needs to be something that's a part of our lives, not just so other people can see it, but, but folks, that is important. Other people really need to see it because the church is criticized so much because they preach one thing but seem to live another way, um, so many. And it only takes one. Uh, you can have, in a sad look, I, I don't, I don't uh, agree with it, but it is what it is. <clears throat> you can have a church with 300 people in it and 299 of them, are, are, are walking the right way. But the one person that goes out and, 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 and totally blows it and screws up and is living in hypocrisy, that's the one everybody looks at. And it seems like they base their judgment on that. So don't you be that one person. We can't help what other people do, but we can prevent ourselves from being the one person that causes other people to stumble. How do you keep other people from stumbling? Walk in a holy manner. When you're going out with your friends, and they want to stop at a bar and say, you know, it's okay if we go out and have a drink as long as we don't get drunk. Walk in holiness. You say, well, Pastor Misha, I don't see what's wrong with going out and having a drink. Well, okay. The Bible says that we should avoid all forms, even the, the idea or perception of evil. Because it can stumble other people. What if somebody walks into your church and they're a recovering? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Walks into a bar and you're drinking and they're a recovering alcoholic. They see you do it and they, well, he did it. I guess it's okay if I do it. And next thing you know, they're they're back in. Um, what is the right word for it? They're they're back into a, a alcohol addiction. It can happen. 
and it does happen. So we need to be very, very careful about how we walk. And I want to emphasize that, um, the importance of walking in holiness, that you that it's real in you so that others can see it. Because see, folks, this is not something that you can put on and take off and put on and take off. It has to, and, and, and we really have to ask God and say, Lord, please, Lord, help your holiness to become a part of me. Help me to walk in this. Let it be real. So I'm not always having to try to put on holiness, but I can walk in it. And and, and um, how do we do that? Well, the Bible says if you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So walking in the Spirit, praying in your your in, in tongues and the prayer language that God has given you, those are all big aids and help in doing those things. But we should strive to, to, to come into a deeper closer relationship with him because relationship i really believe is the key to holiness i i know for for uh, for my family one of the things that we started doing recently is that every every monday night because we consider of course i know everybody considers sunday the beginning of the week but a lot of times people take communion on sundays but every monday for us the beginning of the week the monday uh, monday night is when we do it we, we we recently started taking communion. All all my my wife, myself, my daughter. We get together in 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 on the living room or in in the bedroom, and we take turns. Each one of us has a scripture reading. We 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 open up with prayer. We elaborate a little bit on the scripture for a few minutes. We don't take a real long time. We we pray. We have the scripture reading. Say what that scripture means to uh, us. And then we get into, uh, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, 24, and begin to get into the uh, communion. And we, we, we take communion together. And we appropriate the body of Christ which was shed on the cross for, for you and for me. And the blood which was shed for the remission of our sins, uh, that, that, that sacrifice for us. And we, we be under, have that understanding and, and that and we appropriate that and we 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 take partake of it not to be go through religious motions okay of doing a lot of religious things thinking that in doing those things that we're holy no that's not it but that in doing those things somehow by appropriating in faith uh, everything that Christ is everything that he's done on the cross for us that we can ourselves come into a deeper relationship with him it's it's a it's a matter of becoming less man conscious and more god conscious and doing the things that bring you to that place where you're more aware of, of the lord well now um you know getting into the word of god praying various different things like that they all do it let me see what in the heck happened um on my let me make sure I'm clear here sorry about that folks um Looked like it fogged up on my on, on this thing for a moment. Okay, so we wanna we wanna walk in the holiness that the Lord is requiring of us. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna share a couple of scriptures with you, just a few, about the 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 idea of holiness. I want you to know first of all um, that God is known for His holiness. It's an attribute of the Lord, and we're supposed to be God-like. We're supposed to be Christ-like. So because he is holy, we should be holy. Okay, look, turn with me to the book of Psalm, chapter 93, verse 5. And we'll take a few minutes. I'm breaking in a new Bible, by the way, so you guys are going to have to be patient with me because the pages in this Bible are just so stuck together. This is one of the nicest Bibles. I love it. But I'll tell you what, every time I turn to a scripture... It takes me a while because I've got to, I've got to, I've got to pull pages apart from each other. So I don't remember what I said, but I believe it was ninety three five. Okay, Psalm ninety three, verse five. Too bad I don't have you guys on microphone, or I could say somebody read that out loud for me while I'm trying to get there, and um, then I'll make my comments. See, right now I'm, I'm trying to unstick these two pages here. It's 93.5. Come on. Okay, got it. 93.5 reads as follows, okay? <clears throat> Thy testimonies are very sure. 
Holiness becomes thine house, O Lord, forever. Okay, thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becomes thine or your house, O Lord, forever. Or or we could say actually also that holy because he's holy and it's his attribute, it should be ours, that holiness becomes our house and becomes a part of who we are. O oh, oh Lord, forever. Okay, but anyway, this this scripture shows that that the the attribute, okay, of the Lord is is holiness. He's he said, well, I thought it was love. It's that too. But holiness is 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 what God is known for. He's holy. Okay. Um, the other thing is that. God cannot tolerate and that those, and those I'm going to give you one, two, three, four, five points, okay? The first one is that God is known for his holiness, and I gave you the scripture for that in Psalm 93 verse five. Okay, the second attribute is this, okay, or, or second point is this: God cannot tolerate sin. And this is one of the reasons we should seek for holiness because God doesn't tolerate. He, he can't tolerate sin, doesn't want to tolerate sin. And we shouldn't tolerate it either. So let's look at the the scripture for that. Turn to the uh, book of Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. And it's going to be verse 2. 59, 2. Let me see if I can get there. Here we are. 59, 2. But your iniquities, and and, and folks, this is should be being directed towards us, towards me and towards you. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You know, there's a, a, another scripture, maybe this one, but I think in another other translations, as I've heard it, uh, it says that if you regard iniquity in your heart, God will not hear you. Well, if you ever wanted to know where that scripture was, you could just put a circle around this one right here. Your iniquities have have, have separated between you and your and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you for, that he will not hear. There's some people tonight, probably, and you're wondering why some of your prayers haven't been answered. You've been praying for certain things. There are certain needs in your life, and you think that God hasn't heard you. Maybe you need to look in your heart and do some repenting. I think before we approach the Lord, I know before I partake of communion, but also in in prayer before I approach the Lord, many times I start to pray and then back up and remind myself that I need to examine my heart and repent of anything in my life that isn't right or something that maybe I've done wrong, something I said to somebody, something that the Lord has put in on my heart because I want the Lord to hear me when I pray, or else I'm just praying in vain. The Lord says He'll not regard my cry, uh, um, if I reg- or, or my prayer, if I regard iniquity in my heart. So again, there's this importance, folks, of being holy and not uh, walking that way. Okay, we don't want to walk in sin. All right. Uh, so we see that point two is Isaiah fifty nine two. God cannot tolerate sin. All right. Point three, God uses his word to make us holy. Boy, that, that's, um, uh, what, what, what should we say, a breath of fresh air. God uses his word to make us holy. Well, where does it say that? Let's turn to John chapter 17. The book of John chapter 17. Let me get there and I'll give you the verse. Okay, John 17. Okay. John 17, verse 17, and we'll read that together. John 17, 17, reads as follows. Sanctify them through thy truth. Okay, now let's pay real close attention. Sanctify, it means purify, it means making, being made holy. Sanctify them through thy truth. Then, what is truth? You read the net and keep reading. Thy word is truth. So we find that the Word of God, okay, is a key, uh, an important key to making us holy. 
This is why we need to be in the Word of God, why we need to partake of the Word of God, and why we should be students of God's Word. Because He uses His Word to make us holy. That's point number three. Okay? And if you notice the beginning of that uh, uh, scripture, He says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Now see, people say sometimes, Well, I thought I was already sanctified when I asked the Lord into my life, yes, you you have his righteousness and his holiness in you. You've partaken of that. It's there, but we're conti- but it's a process. We're continually sanctified. That's why the Bible says being we're also saved to the uttermost. Salvation is a one-time event, but also a continual process of uh, we're, we're saved and yet being saved, okay? And we're, we're holy and yet being made holy. And... If it was all right there the moment that we asked Jesus into our life and, 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 and everything, and we never had to improve and never had to go any further, then there would be uh, uh, an issue. God bless you, Brother David. Thank you for watching. So, so holiness and sanctification are not just a given the moment you accept Christ into your life. They're there, but it's a process, and that's why the Scripture in... John seventeen seventeen says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. See, it's a process and it's through the word of God that holiness comes into our our lives. It's, it's one of the means of getting to that place where we can walk in holiness. And as I said at the beginning, the word of God tells us that without holiness, no man shall see God. No man. It has to be a part of our lives. We need to strive to be holy. We need to ask the Lord to help us in that area. We need to walk in the Spirit so we'll not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh, okay? These are the things that we need to get back to. And maybe for some Christian 101, Christianity 101, and, and maybe for others, you've never even heard this. You've heard everything else uh, talked about, but you haven't heard this. This is something, though, that's very, very important because as the Word said, and as we've already talked, and I've probably repeated it now three or four times, but I'll say it again. In Hebrews, and we've already gone uh, covered covered the scripture. It tells us that without holiness, no man shall see God. Okay, so so point one was that God is known for His holiness. Point two, God cannot tolerate sin. Point number three, God uses His word to make us holy. And point four is found in one Peter one five. So why don't we turn there, and I'll tell you what it is after we get there. One Peter. What did I say? Yeah, 1 Peter 1, I'm sorry, not 1 Peter 1, 5, but 1 Peter 1, 15. My eyes are starting to play tricks on me here. 1 Peter 1, 15. And again, you know, give me a second because I got to pry the pages off my new Bible since they're all together here. 1 Peter, oops, here we go. Somebody can read that out loud for me, right? On. These pages here. 1 Peter 1.15. Okay, here we go. Okay. You probably already read it and were wondering where, where, where the next scripture is. See? Pages. <laughs> I, th- I think somebody must have glued these things together here. Hang on. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter one fifteen <clears throat> reads as follows. <clears throat> but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Okay? Um, again, but as he which hath called you is holy. God is holy, folks, Okay? And then he's saying, ye also, or so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Okay, so what are what are we talk what are we saying? Well, we already told you that point four is that Christians should try to be holy. It's not just though a manner of well, let me back up, okay? We, the, 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 the word that we just read says that we should be holy in all manner of conversation. If you're holy, though, and there's ho- and, and you're walking in holiness, okay, it's going to come out in what you say. 
You understand what I'm saying? Your conversation is going to be holy. Your uh, the context of what you say and how you say it will come out the right way because you're walking in holiness. So again, we want to be holy. This is what we should do. We need, we need to strive for that and and seek God to help us in that area. Okay, and if you do that, then your actions, your conversation, the things that you say to others, the things you say sometimes to yourself, those are the thing things will that will, will, they'll they'll change, and you'll begin to move in uh, a holy conversation and holy 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 words. Okay, I was going to say holy talk, holy speaking, but it'll your word and your conversation will be holy because it's what's in you. All righty, and so here we go with uh, point number five. Point four was that Christians should try to be holy, and Finally, God is worthy of praise because he is holy. Okay, we've already shown that God is holy. But turn, and this is the final scripture to the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 8. Revelation 4, 8. Okay. And again, I'm already there. I just got to pry the pages together. Here we go. 4, 8. Got to that one. Okay. Is that right? Revelations 4, 8. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, for Revelation 4, 8. And the four beasts had, uh, and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, these creatures would bow and they would worship and say continually, holy, holy, holy. And these were your, you know, seraphim and cherub, what were they, cherubim and seraphim and different angelic beings, the ones with the six wings. And they wouldn't, it says they didn't rest day and night. So could you imagine that 24-7, just, just saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. But that should make the point, brothers and sisters, that we serve a holy God, and because Christ dwells within us, okay, and He's holy, we need to be holy. It should come for that. That should be a part of our life. And again, I want to end the way that I begin by stating that there are too many churches, too many Christians that emphasize a lot of good things. Some things maybe not too good, but. Um, they, they they emphasize salvation, which is a great thing. They emphasize being filled with the Holy Spirit. A very, very important thing. They emphasize health, wealth, and prosperity. And I believe in, in, in those, you know, within prosperity within the proper measures and means, okay, of Scripture. Um, they emphasize uh, the, you know, end time, the rapture, um, the Antichrist, who is he going to be? Um, the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. So many things in the Bible that people, sometimes they um, major on the minors, I want to say, although I don't think salvation is a minor thing, but on some of the other things. But in all of all, all of that, it seems to me, and, 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 and they major on grace, okay? And grace and mercy are all important. But it seems to me that in all of these things, that one of the things that's left out that the church needs so much right now is holiness. It's not talked about because a lot of people don't want to hear it. There are some preachers that don't want to talk about holiness because if they do, they have to talk about sin. And they don't want to talk about sin because they're afraid if they do, it's going to empty out their church. They won't get as much offering money in. They won't be able to pay for their programs. So, hey, you know, let's just stay away from these controversial topics. But folks... You have to preach the full gospel. It has to be from Genesis to Revelation, and you can't just pick and choose what you want to talk about. We need the full word of God. We need to understand it, and we need to understand that God is requiring holiness. And this is one of the things that I see <clears throat> that the Church of Jesus Christ in the United States, anyway, and in most other countries, I'm sure, lacks today. There's not enough emphasis on holiness, on godly living. And, and, and again, remember, folks, what I said. Every Christian, whether you believe it or not, has a magnifying glass over them. When you ask the Lord into your life, 
somebody is watching. They want to see if it's real for you. They don't want to see you put on a show, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it They want to see it real so that they can believe too. But they're watching. There are people watching you. Our witness, the best witness that you could have is a witness of holiness, okay? So I pray that this has blessed you this evening. I'm going to ask um, uh, that we close with a word of prayer for a moment. Um, and for those that maybe need to make that recommitment to, uh, of, of just, Lord, I, I need to walk in holiness and I really recommit my life to you, just just do it. It's a, it, it's a, it's not anything that I can do for you, but you can do it. You just, it's between you and God. Okay, but it, you need to mean it. You need to surrender or else it's just words. It's like the guy that says to the girl, I love you, but then neither of them are together anymore. And you no, know, you can't find one and you can't find the other because unless you mean it, words are only words. All right, and if you say, I surrender, Lord, or I ask you into my life, or I recommit you, my life to you, Lord, yeah, you, or, or somebody leads you in a prayer and you pray the prayer, but you didn't mean it. It was just words and it's it, it's nothing. It means nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, it has to be something that you do from your heart. You have to mean it, okay? So um, let's, with that in mind, I just pray that you'll do that. I'm not gonna lead you tonight that way. Um, this is something you can do in your own time. You just commit yourself to the Lord and uh, acknowledge that you believe that Christ died for your sins, that he rose from the dead, that he's alive today, that you're guilty of sin, that you're willing to not only ask for forgiveness, but repent, which means that you're willing to turn away from that, and that by God's grace, mercy, and through his love and what he's done, his provision on the cross, that God will, and by his Holy Spirit, help you to keep your commitment to walk with him and to serve him all the days of your life. Now, if you say, wow, well, that's a lot, and I don't know if I can remember all that, hey, that's why we're online, and you can go back, and you can listen to it and pray that prayer. Okay, so Lord bless you. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, for this message this evening. Lord, for allowing me to bring this. I pray, Lord, for those that are online now that are listening, those that will be on later on, I pray that you'll uh, seal this their spirit. You said my word is a spirit in their life. I pray that they bear fruit within each one of our hearts in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it. Amen. Brother David, I hope you're still there, and if you are, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Pastor. You know, Lord bless you and thank you for coming on. And you and I, we need to hook up here pretty soon, get together and uh, go grab a bite dinner. We've been talking about it forever. I'm in Yuma. You're still out in California. But hey, I'm out in California at least once every every two weeks or so. So we can still hook up, okay? And for everybody else that's watching, hey, if you guys want to come with us, you're invited, okay? Amen. I'll let you know where, time, place, and everything as soon as I know. All right, Brother David, God bless you and you're welcome. Um, love you, man. You take care. Yeah, soon. Amen. All right, everyone. So, you know what I always say when I close it? I said, keep your feet to the ground, your head to the sky, and I will see you next Tuesday night at 8 p.m. for studying the Word. God bless you. Bye-bye.